Hi there, I'm Ms. Tats again. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about teaching art to kindergarten. Yes! <laughs> so let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. just some general like tips and just like so you know uh, when it comes to teaching art to kindergarten because uh, it's different right it's their first go at school so everything's gonna just take a little bit more time <laughs> a little bit more time and that's okay it's okay we're gonna go at their pace so just so Number one, teaching art to kindergarten, you just need to understand that everything will take longer than you expect. So whatever you think the timeline is, add a couple extra days on to that because it's going to take longer than you expect. And, and, and this is true, right? This is their first go at it, it's their first experience in school. Um, they're just doing the, maybe this art for the first time. Maybe, maybe they've never had an app. Uh, uh, been exposed to drawing and creating you we don't know we don't know where they're at right so um this is their first go and they may be shocked something may be stunned right in your art class like <laughs> right there's, there's a whole new experience for them so um it's going to take longer than you expect and that's okay right they're just they're just little guys they're just five years old it's okay it's okay um, to let everything, we don't need to put the pressure, it's hard, we don't need to put the pressure on them, right? We know that there's a bit of a pressure because we want to get things going, but it's only kindergarten, so everything's going to take a little bit longer than you expect, and that is okay. All right, number two is lots, we need to have lots of time for cleaning, <laughs> um, and, and instruction, because that also is going to take longer than you expect, right? So clean up with kindergarten instruction all are going to take longer than you expect even compared to grade one it's going to take longer than you expect to do all these things you're going to want to practice it a lot um just like even like the task of kids going and washing their hands at a, at a sink it's going to take a long time compared to if you just told like grade four is like okay clean up they're automatically going to go wash their hands put soap on their hands not get distracted at the sink <laughs> turn off the sink, will dry their hands without help. Like you're, these are things that if you teach older kids a lot more that you're, you take for granted, you don't realize it's gonna take, it's like a thing, like we're gonna have all wash your hands, we're all lined up, it takes a lot longer <laughs> to accomplish this. You're pumping soap on their hands, like I don't know. Like it just at the very beginning, I mean at the end of the year, well probably they're almost in grade one, right? They're in a groove now. They don't need as much help. But at the very beginning, it is a little bit different. So just take allow for longer time for instruction, for for cleanup and all these things, right? Which means, yeah, your classes are by the time are really short, right? It's gonna take longer than you expect, and all that's also gonna take longer than you expect. So the work time in K is tiny <laughs> from my experience compared to my other classes, right? When I compare it directly to other classes, my productivity is smaller. But they're younger, this is all new, they're smaller. It's okay, but that's just something to think about and take into consideration when planning. All right, my question for you is, before we continue, and I would like you to answer the question in the comment section of this video is, what questions do you have about teaching art to kindergarten? Please let me know in the description below the video what questions you have when it comes to teaching art to kindergarten. All right, number three, my advice is to do more play-based explorations and focus on process over pro product. So we want to do a lot more play base where they're exploring materials and mediums and getting to know them. Um, creating maybe some larger works of like fish or butterflies or whatever it is. And they're doing mixed media processes. They're painting first and they're gluing on different colors and shapes afterwards, right? You're not telling them how to do it, but they're exploring it on their own. They're having fun. They're seeing what happens. They're making mistakes. They're getting messy and life is good, right? 
is process over maybe what it might look like at the very end of it, right? And that is good to do a lot of the time, right? We want to do process-based, process-based project, process-based, process-based project. That way they're getting to understand um, the materials, developing their fine motor skills and their cognitive abilities, but then we'll pair that afterwards with some more structure so that way they can start learning how to draw bigger, how to draw shapes, um, draw be more traditional with artworks, right? You know, creating something that is more product based. So that way it's a transition, but we don't want to kill their creativity. So we, and we want them to just really learn to understand naturally the mediums and materials and have fun, um, express themselves. So we want to do play base, play base, then maybe a project. Play base, play base, and then a project. And will you have a whole bunch of stuff that they get to show at the end of the year that's a complete work? Well, maybe not. And that's okay too. But they learned, they had fun, they want to come back to your classroom next year. You've met more of the curricular competencies because it's more more like that anyways. Like they're, they're more expected to do more self-directed, um, creating from their own interest type work than memorizing all the elements of art, blah, 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 blah. You can read books about those elements of art and like practice with line or experimenting with line or experimenting with drawing shapes. And that is as far as you're gonna probably get with it as well. <laughs> right? We're like, wow, we do some different types of lines. Wow. You can integrate it into an artwork, right? But it's gonna be simple and we're gonna scale it down because it's only kindergarten, right? So it's going to look different than what you might teach at an older grade. Item number four. Um, so after again, lots of exploration exploration and learning, then um, you can do your artworks, right? So you're gonna do, again, explore, explore, or play-based stuff, right? Then an artwork, right? So maybe you practice with lines one day, just, or you teach lines one day, and then have like a free practice of, of uh, drawing lines. And the next day they're drawing different types of lines on maybe this giant piece of paper at the table. They can all draw different types of lines that they know with their friends. Um, or, or you can read a story about line and then they do that, right? Um, and then the third day, they are now creating an artwork that is integrated with line, right? So you're scaffolding the learning. Um, it's not just a free-for-all experimentation, right? It's more, it's just play-based. They're still practicing using different mediums. They're still practicing doing the work and the learning part of it. Um, they're learning how to, and then, but they have two days of understanding, you know, two work classes of understanding before they have to show, you know, and then you can start your art project, which is going to take a few classes probably also, right? So, you know, for example, if you, if you do line, maybe understanding and learning about line is now like five, six classes, not just, you know, one class and move on, right? Which it should be anyways, right? We want them to have a deeper understanding. Um, and then they'll know a lot about line at the end of it, but they've had time to practice. They've had time to practice again and then they can start showing you. And you won't start your assessment on it until the show what you know, so the actual artwork. So the first two days, or first few classes, whatever, however you wanna plan it, depends on your, how often you see them, is gonna be practicing, practicing, you're not assessing, right? You might be doing a formative assessment, right? Seeing how they're progressing, or if you might need to add another practice day in there, um, but you're not ass you know, assessing them or you're marking them and stuff, right? And then, you'll have start your art project and that's where you give it more of a mark or whatever it is. All right, now if you are looking for a fully planned um, art, cur um, art unit for kindergarten, it might actually be a good curriculum depending on how often you see them, right? Um, if you only see them a certain amount of times, it might actually cover your whole year, <laughs> right? Um, but it is my elements of art um, art unit for kindergarten is all themed of animals and it's so cute and fun. You'll get your introduction video and activities, your play-based learning at warm-up activities. Um, it'll give you seven student choice art prompt pages. It will give you seven artworks, so one for each of the elements of art, um, all under the same theme of animals. And then it will also give you your end of unit art project and so much more. So if you want to check that out, I will leave the link to that kindergarten elements of our unit in the description of this video. Your next video to watch is teaching the elements of art. So if you want to learn about teaching the elements of art, you can click the link above 
are in the description of this video and you can watch that episode next. Don't forget to answer my question in the comments of this video, which was, what questions do you have about teaching arts to kindergarten? Please make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel to help me and allow me to continue to create these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.